Hey everybody. I thought I'd make my first real video opposed to the one that I made earlier, you know, doing my fake guitaring. It wasn't really good. But anyway, this is the outdoor boiler we got. And um, it's probably not going to be a very good video, but just, you know, bear with me or whatever. Hopefully you learn something now because if you don't do any, having never done this before or, you know, first time having one or whatever. Um, now, this one here, this is a Take 07, uh, 007. James Bond edition, and it, uh, it you know, it's a, it's a good pump. Uh, it, it does, it's pretty good for for uh, for high head. I mean, um, you know, I don't know everything about head, but static head, and I mean, you learn about all that stuff. I mean, it's basically the static head is simply the difference between the water at the top of the boiler and then where the pump is, and the pump is about level with that air conditioner over there, way over there. So, you know what, there's not a lot of head there. You're talking only three or four feet or something, right? So, that's why I'm using this guy for the house because this guy here, although it pumps 32 gallons uh, per minute, anything over about eight, eight, eight head, it, it doesn't pump. So, um, it's good because I have one another one in the house. I have another one of these in the house that pumps to, to zones and stuff, stuff like that within the house. Um, now I could show you that later, but uh, that the it basically goes in here, okay? And there's a, a valve, a zone valve that goes up and feeds heat up into this room up here. So there's a there's a nine and a half foot additional head there, and from there, there's also another zone that feeds in here. But what it does is it goes up into the ceiling over there and down here, and back up again over and down again in here. So there's a lot of a lot of up and down so it needs a lot of pressure in there whereas that big pump the big red one the armstrong s25 it just can't handle it whereas the the Taco 7 can handle this one here but then it can't handle the additional one up top here the additional zone up there and i say this one before this one because whoever set it up that's what they did they set it up so as the one zone going into that one room over the far right, which I mentioned over there, it, it, it feeds that one first. So that's going to go to the the uh, line of uh, least resistance. So uh, that's why it doesn't really feed the top one until it until it kicks off on the bottom. The thermostat kicks off, and then it'll feed the other one. But uh, so I need to get a, a new pump, maybe a Taco um, Double O. 11 or double 13 or something like that you can go online and check out the curves and you'll see the curves and how it all works and and you know you'll get a better idea because i just changed this pump today for one of these and put one of these in the house where it was opposite before and i wasn't getting anything anywhere other than the main plenum where the water to heat water to air heat exchanger is so once i changed that i started to get a bit more power but so this one's fine I think I need to get a, a better one in the house. This is the second time I kicked it in this year because I was, you know, just I'm just kind of checking things out at the moment. Um, so right now we're sitting at what? Uh, that's a pretty crappy picture. There it is. One, one eighty. What is it? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. What does that say now there? Yeah. Sorry. One sixty. Sorry. And it's, it's only about 130 in the house. I'm losing quite a bit of heat, actually. Um, now that, I got it off because I had to mess around with this. This is the equal, the uh, Aquastat. Now, um, th that that is that goes on and off depending on um, how. The boiler should go up to about 180 degrees. Okay. Now, as you can see, that's set at 150. The reason being is because it wasn't shutting off and I had to figure out what was going on. And I realized that, that it's, it's not, it doesn't correlate with the, with the uh, actual temperature. But now you have to set this little dial here. Okay, that little dial there um, is set at 10. That means that's the limit switch and that's gonna, um, that's gonna go after it drops 10 degrees down to 170, or in this case, 140, it's gonna kick back on again. Um, but in essence, it will be 170. So it'll be going 180, 170, and that's what you wanna do, just keep it coming on and off. And you know, and uh, what it does when it comes off, when it shuts off, it shuts off the fan. Like this fan is pretty strong. So this is a boilerplate seal. Right now, this is just burning a bunch of crap right now. But this fan here is extremely strong. 
and it's uh, it's pumping good. So, but what happens is when you come out here, so you can see what's going on. You're going to open it. You turn on the light, closes the damper, shuts off the fan. So at nighttime, you can see what you're doing when you open it up. You're going to be loading it up, and then you, as soon as you close it off again, shut off the light, and uh, everything comes back on again. Assuming, of course, it's it's calling for heat and it's at lower than 180 degrees. This is made of boilerplate steel, as I mentioned, uh, and it's uh, it's pretty good. It, it doesn't matter what name it is because you know all of them are getting made by stainless steel now, and people gotta understand that all, all these new boilers, you know, it doesn't matter what make they are. They everyone's pushing this stainless steel stuff like it's some amazing deal. Oh God, it's stainless steel. Oh God, bend over backwards to pay fifteen thousand for it. Well, you know what? Unless you're I shouldn't say a good welder. I mean, obviously you got to be a good welder because you're going to get a leak, right? It's going to happen eventually. Um, it's not about being a good welder. It's about doing it right and getting an honest welder who's good. And what that means is they have to condition the stainless steel before they weld it. And then they have to condition it after they weld it so that there's no additional cracks. It's called chasing cracks. And uh, that happens um, if you don't condition it. By conditioning, what I mean is slowly heating it up to whatever temperature I'm not a welder okay but I mean I know the basics of it and and you have to slowly heat up the uh, the stainless steel where you're gonna weld to an acceptable level whatever that level may be and and then you weld and then you have to apply heat you have to continually apply heat at a lower level I guess and then just continue and then drop the level until it just kind of weans itself off the high heat and that that uh, apparently inhibits any more cracking or at least lessens the 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 chances of of getting more cracking so uh you know uh that's basically what they what they say and what i've learned and and i've talked to pe people i've read and that's what they said so you know that might help you along the lines as far as why you may not may not want to get a stainless steel model um so uh anyway these we just put in this one here is running to is running to my shop here um, like I said, this is the Taiko 007 James Bond edition. I haven't got it hooked up just yet because uh, I'm going to um, I have to get it hooked up in the shop yet. I just dug the, the hole, the trench here, sorry, the trench and dug the, the trench here and it's going up over here. There's all my wood where I'm going to put all my wood and as soon as I put brakes on the, uh, the UTV, I got to fix that too. So I got a lot of work to do, eh? So, anyway, she's bubbling over a little bit now, so it's just expanding, because I just filled it up, so the water's expanding inside. That's going to happen a wee bit, uh, and we're getting up near temperature now. We're up uh, 170, almost, 167 or 6 or something. Just got this load here. That's about, uh, it's about 14, 15 cord. That's a nice, that's a nice bit of wood. You know, you got a whole good, uh, whole whack of good burning wood in there you know you got some beech and some hard maple soft maple as well but uh you know there's some good wood in there this one on the other hand nah not so good but i'm gonna be burning that this year it's really seasoned and you know what i hope it's gonna last me through the season but i have a funny feeling it won't there's even some willow in this bunch yeah, not a good not a really good bunch but uh anyway uh that's it and like i said this line here is the second line run by the Taco 007 and it went up inside to the corner over here. Um, I, fill, I filled up the, the, the furnace with, uh, with uh, rainwater here that I got from over here. Uh, had it going in there. And then I used the, the pump. I'm sure you've seen these little pumps here. Uh, these little pumps here that, that you just put a drill on the end there. And you, and you drill it it just spins around and goes and fills it up they're pretty cool they work anyway i mean they're a little slow but they do work so this is the shop here and uh in progress getting it all insulated and whatever but uh that's another story here we got and the person that did this before you know they kind of screwed up so i need to come you know do this properly so that you know it lasts a little bit <clears throat> but here's the uh Here's the pipe coming in here. This is PEX, not Kitec. Unfortunately, I got Kitec. I know, God, kill me, right? But this is the PEX here, so this is better anyway. And uh, this is going to run, sit on this pad underneath all this crap here. There's a concrete pad, as you can see. And that is going to, uh, I'm going to be putting this water to air heat exchanger, well, I'll show you in a second, that's going to fit into this furnace right here. This old furnace that I picked up, it's upside down there. I just really need the fan, don't I? 
Here is the water to air heat exchanger. I had to take off these oats. I used one. I had to take off the old, just grind them off. As you can see, I kind of grinded a little bit on there, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. I'm going to fit the pecs over there. I'm going to crimp them. And I'll tell you right now, these crimp things, you know what? They're pretty good. I'll tell you this. Uh, these things right here for crimping pecs, use these uh, cinch, cinch crimps or whatever they're called, cinch crimps. And they're right here. These, these things here, you can have a look at that. Let's see, it gonna, uh, yeah, these things here. Um, can you see them there? Uh, it's hard to see. Let me see if I got another one here. Um, one that's open out here. Um, sorry, if I know this is gonna look. Uh, here we go. Here we go. So that thing, what it does, that shinsuke, it, it crimps onto this thing here, and it squeezes, squeezes that together, and which clamps this whole thing together. And it actually works really good. So, so this thing here right here's that and then oops hang on sorry hang on all right i'll put it i'll put it up there can you see it there now let's see if you can get it there a little bit let me see okay so that's gonna go like so right and and then when you're doing it this is gonna sit inside there and it's gonna when you it's gonna crimp anyway anyway it works it's good it works good so I'm going to put those onto that. These ones here, smaller ones, of course, half inch and, uh, and then over, or three quarter, excuse me. And then over there, I'm going to put an inch one. And, uh, and then we'll have heat in here as well, hopefully. I mean, as long as it works, we're just going to hook up a thermostat to the green, which is the fan on here, wherever that may be, somewhere up in here or whatever. And over here, I guess, that's probably where it is right there. So uh, the G, wherever G is, uh, I'm going to hook up that to the um to the w so it's going to call for heat but instead of calling for heat it's just going to call it's going to click the fan on opposed to put on a heat because i just want the fan to blow through the hot water which is going to be situated somewhere in this area here once it gets flipped over um so anyway uh i'll let you know how it goes thanks see ya